Tatsu is the former Yazuka legendary boss known as the Immortal Dragon. But one day, he decided to quit his gangster life to become a house husband. At first glance, Tatsu with a tattooed dragon on his back and an eerie look appears to be a notorious gangster ready to harm someone. However, he actually wakes up early in the morning to prepare cute lunch boxes for his wife to take to work. Unfortunately, she forgets she has a meeting at the company today and rushes out without breakfast. Tatsu is about to start his chores when he notices that his wife has left her lunchbox behind. Quickly, he packs the lunchbox and places it in a suitcase, then rushes out on his bicycle to deliver it to his wife. However, because he is riding so fast, he is stopped by police officers who question him. As he answers their questions with his eerie appearance, they realize that he is from a Yakuza gang. Rumors say he has single-handedly wiped out a hostile gang in one night, and is nicknamed the Immortal Dragon before disappearing years ago. The policemen become frightened, thinking Tatsu might be reaching for a weapon in his pocket. However, that is all in the past, and now he is too busy delivering food to his wife. To their surprise, Tatsu takes out a coupon instead, attempting to bribe the two policemen. A salesman is desperately seeking someone to sell his fake knives to when he arrives at Tatsu's apartment. He forcefully enters when Tatsu answers the door. Tatsu holds a knife that appears to be covered in what he thinks is blood, and Tatsu's eerie appearance also terrifies him. However, being a professional, he continues to pitch his product to Tatsu. Tatsu, intrigued, decides to test the knife to determine if it is a fake product. He uses the knife to prepare a hamburger steak and serves it to the salesman. To the salesman's surprise, he enjoys the steak so much that it reminds him of his hometown. So, he completely forgets the original purpose of his visit, which is to sell subpar knives to unsuspecting customers. A young man named Masa is forcibly ejected from a store. He happens to be one of Tatsu's former associates from their gangster days. Since Tatsu's disappearance, the gang has disbanded, and Masa finds himself in a dead end, searching for a rival group's territory and any sign of Tatsu. Luckily, he spots Tatsu buying vegetables at the market. Masa approaches him and begins sharing his current situation, urging Tatsu to return to his former status as the Immortal Dragon. However, Tatsu, with his characteristic eerie look, lights a cigarette and asks Masa to follow him. To Masa's surprise, he leads him to a cooking class. After preparing the day's recipe, the women in the class applaud Tatsu's cooking skills. Masa can't help but scold him for leaving his gangster life behind for this life. But Tatsu calmly explains that he is no longer a gangster. Now, his priority is protecting his family, and he can't achieve that through violence. Masa laughs at Tatsu's statement and knocks the plate of food from his hand. In response, Tatsu swiftly slaps Masa for his insolence and instructs him to clean up the mess he has made. One day, while riding his bicycle, Tatsu has to swerve to avoid hitting a cat and ends up crashing into a car. The car belongs to a gangster who is a member of the Kunami gang, one of his enemies. Kunami immediately assumes that Tatsu has intentionally tried to assassinate him, and he and his driver chase after Tatsu. The chase leads them into a clothing store, where they think they have Tatsu cornered. However, the store is having a sales promotion, and customers are scrambling to get their hands on discounted items. Tatsu orders Kunami and his driver to join in the scuffle. In the end, they only manage to grab a t-shirt, a pair of socks, and gloves. Tatsu scolds them for making him lose the sale and reminds them that he is now a house husband. Kunami, unable to believe Tatsu's new lifestyle, pulls out a gun and points it at Tatsu, telling him to stop pretending. However, Tatsu, with a few swift moves, manages to wrestle Kunami to the ground and puts the gloves on him. He tells Kunami to keep the gloves, emphasizing that it is cold outside. This simple act triggers a flood of memories for Kunami, reminding him of his childhood when his mother had to save money to buy him gloves. Overwhelmed with emotion, Kunami bursts into tears right there on the spot and decides to keep the gloves. Tatsu decides to stop by a shop to purchase his wife, Miku, her favorite anime series. However, with his intimidating appearance and a suitcase in tow, it looks as though he is engaged in some sort of underground transaction. Later that night, Miku returns home from work, only to be met with Tatsu thoroughly checking her body as if she were a criminal before allowing her to enter the house. To her shock, she finds the house filled with decorations. Tatsu has orchestrated the entire setup to celebrate her birthday, but it has the distinct ambience of a Yakuza-style celebration. Even when he sings the birthday song, his facial expression remains menacing, creating an eerie atmosphere. Tatsu then presents Miku with a gift, which turns out to be the anime series he had purchased earlier. 
grateful for the gesture. Miku thanks him but reveals that she already owns that particular series. Tatsu feels deeply disappointed in himself and wants to cut off his pinky finger as a gesture of contrition. In her panic and disbelief, Miku reacts by punching him, which sends Tatsu flying through a glass window like a bird. The next day, Tatsu receives a phone call from Miku, who informs him that the landlady is coming over. To ensure that everything is clean, he brings out the automatic vacuum cleaner to do some work. He monitors the machine and is impressed that it can clean the floor properly. After realizing that the machine is reputable, he entrusts the area to it for vacuuming but scolds the machine when he realizes it can't reach the corners. He proceeds to clean the corners and the remaining areas because he always wants everywhere to be spick and span. Unexpectedly, the machine sucks on his cat's tail, causing it to jump in fear, and as a result, the cat grabs onto the wine rack, causing it to fall with a bottle hitting Tatsu in the face. Just when the landlady comes to visit, she screams as she sees Tatsu's clothes and floor stained with red. Tatsu also doesn't help the situation as he unknowingly makes it sound like he was attacked. A neighbor asks Tatsu to watch her son, whose name is Ryota, as she has a meeting to attend. Upon seeing Tatsu's fierce face, Ryota dares not say anything and ends up sitting in a corner. To ease his fear, Tatsu brings a plate of cookies he has made himself for Ryota to try. Ryota enjoys the cookies, and Tatsu is relieved that he likes them. The kid is no longer afraid of him, so he invites Ryota to play a game with him. Ryota is excited, thinking it would be video games, but it turns out to be all about dice, gambling, and mahjong. Ryota becomes bored and curls back into the corner. Suddenly, Ryota notices a doll figurine from a popular anime and starts playing with it. Unfortunately, things take another turn as he trips over his own foot, breaking the doll. Tatsu makes sure Ryota isn't hurt first and then thinks of what to do with the doll, which belongs to his wife, so he proceeds to bury the doll. As soon as he finishes burying it, his wife arrives from work, and he quickly kneels down to apologize and seek leniency. She ends up providing the glue to fix it. Tatsu is on his way back from the market when he stumbles upon Masa surrounded by some members of another gang. Masa, relieved to see Tatsu, rushes over to him and pleads for his assistance in the impending fight. However, Tatsu slaps Masa and tells him to handle the situation himself since he has initiated the confrontation. The other gang members soon recognize Tatsu as the infamous immortal dragon, and their fear prompts them to back away. However, their boss, infuriated by Masa's taunts, turns and strikes Tatsu on the head with a piece of wood. Despite bleeding from the head, Tatsu remains unfazed and maintains his eerie, imposing demeanor. The gang boss, now intimidated, attempts to stab Tatsu, but Tatsu deftly blocks the attack using a book. Frightened, the boss ultimately decides to retreat. Masa observed Tatsu's calm and collected composure during the encounter. This made him wonder if being a house husband and being the immortal dragon might demand similar qualities and methods. He humbly bows his head and asks to become Tatsu's disciple, eager to learn from him. Later that evening, the two of them end up crafting a beautiful wooden chair together. Tatsu realizes that he is starting to accumulate some extra weight, so he decides to take up hula hooping as an exercise at home. However, this activity distracts Miku, and she scolds him for it and introduces him to a fitness gym. At the gym, he encounters some neighbors who don't expect him to be there. They all attend the dance exercise class, and while Tatsu manages to keep up with the moves, his perpetual smile makes the others feel uneasy, interpreting it as rather menacing. Encouraged by the neighbors, Tatsu also decides to try the yoga class. To everyone's surprise, he flawlessly executes all the yoga poses and even assigns each pose a name related to his past experiences in the world of gangsters. When the yoga session concludes, Tatsu compliments the class, expressing his satisfaction with having broken a sweat. However, as he is about to change his clothes, he inadvertently walks into the women's changing room. Horrified by his own mistake, he punishes himself by banging his head on the ground. He even requests the women to banish him to a mountain for further self-punishment. This understandably confuses the ladies. Tatsu and his wife go shopping at the local shopping center. When Tatsu asks an employee for some white powder stuff, the employee is visibly frightened. However, Miku clarifies that he means flour. As they continue shopping, Tatsu starts to object to some of Miku's choices, leading to an argument between them. Their disagreement catches the attention of passersby, who, upon seeing Tatsu's intimidating appearance, think that a Yakuza is harassing an innocent person. Miku realizes that it might be Tatsu's look that is causing stares, 
so she suggests he try on different clothes. However, no matter what he wears, it seems that his gangster looks only intensifies. Tatsu, taking Miku's advice, decides to change his attire. Miku is pleased with his choice of a pink apron with her favorite character. She even asks him to strike a pose while wearing it. The sight of Tatsu in his pink apron leaves passersby in shock, but Miku seems to adore the new look. During a shopping trip, Tatsu teaches Masa how to plan a trip to the market. However, Masa stops to buy a snack from a food stand. The person running the food stand turns out to be Torajiro, also known as the Steelfist Tiger. Torajiro was Tatsu's arch-rival from his Yakuza days. Torajiro harbors a grudge against Tatsu because Tatsu had been responsible for the downfall of his gang while Torajiro was in prison. In a moment of intense rivalry, Tatsu agrees to a showdown with Torajiro. However, the legendary showdown is not a physical fight but a cooking competition to test their culinary skills. As the two former gangsters face off in the kitchen, they prepare delicious dishes and then take the perfect photos to showcase their creations on Instagram. After two hours, Tatsu emerges as the winner with one like on his picture, while Torajiro's dish receives no likes at all. A few days later, Tatsu goes car shopping with his wife. Miku loves every car they are shown, but her husband always criticizes the cars, saying they aren't good for shopping or are gas guzzlers. What he liked was a pickup that met all their needs without consuming gas and was easy for shopping trips. However, for ladies, appearance is very important, so Miku doesn't like this car at all. In the end, the sales lady chooses a car that is eye-catching and has a big trunk, they both like it. But when asked to take it for a test drive, Tatsu begins inspecting the car, looking for any potential spy tech. Once they start the test drive, Miku reminds him to pay attention and be prepared for all situations. However, as soon as he sees the security guard, he thinks the guard is an assassin trying to kill him. While driving away to avoid the supposed assassin guard, he sees an old man passing by and he also thinks the old man is an assassin aiming a missile at the car. In the end, he realizes the scenarios aren't real and abandons the idea of purchasing the car. One day, Tatsu stops by Moss's house to visit. Tatsu isn't pleased with the heap of laundry in the house, it probably hasn't been washed in a month. Masa is about to throw them all in the washing machine when Tatsu slaps him, saying he is doing it wrong. Tatsu then begins separating the clothes into the washing machine and uses his hands to scrape away the stubborn stains on the other clothes, while Masa takes notes. They finish the laundry and hang them to dry, but the wind blows one away and Masa has to go pick it up. Some months ago, Miku told Tatsu to get rid of the home gadgets he had bought but wasn't using. So now, Tatsu is at a flea market, trying to sell the gadgets, but he hasn't sold anything since. Some thugs arrive, demanding that the traders pay their dues for using the area as a marketplace. However, when the leader of the thugs sees Tatsu, his legs start trembling. Tatsu then leads them away to settle the matter. Tatsu offers him some gadgets, but all this thug leader can think about is that Tatsu means he's going to use the gadgets to torture him. In the end, his legs give way, and he passes out while Tatsu just leaves the gadgets with him before leaving. One day, while he is watering the plants, two policemen watch him, assuming he must be growing illegal plants. After a while, they see him carrying a shady briefcase and leaving the house. The policemen immediately follow him. A moment later, they see him discreetly giving a small bag to Masa. To gather more evidence, they follow the two into an alley and see them enter a small store with a closed sign. One of the policemen immediately rushes into the store with the intention of catching them red-handed. However, it turns out they are just celebrating the chair lady's birthday. That small bag, which they thought contained prohibited goods, actually contained some basil leaves. The suitcase that they thought contained money turns out to only contain a scented vase meant as a birthday gift for the chair lady. The thug leader, whose legs were trembling when he saw Tatsu, was still angry about the whole situation. So, he trained his legs and took supplements so they would be strong and not tremble again. But when he went out to take revenge, immediately he saw Tatsu from afar, his legs buckled, and he fell to the ground. Tatsu has been very active lately, joining the housewives to play volleyball. On this day, the housewives team was scheduled to play against another team. But they didn't expect the bear team to be there, they were actual gangsters. The match began, and Tatsu, with the help of everyone, tried to outweigh the other team. But the bear team also held their ground, making the two teams evenly matched. In the end, the bear team emerges victorious. Tatsu kneels and places all the blame for the loss on himself, but the leader of the bear team reaches out to help him stand up, recognizing that it had been a great game. 
Ultimately, the two teams congratulate each other and take souvenir photos together. Miku is returning from work when she sees her husband negotiating with the meat seller. Later, they both walk home. But before that, Tatsu asks if they can make short stops in other stores. Miku can't figure out the situation as Tatsu, and the vendors seem to be talking in code. After the mission is complete, he then reveals he has been collecting stamps meant for a lucky draw. In return, she follows him to the lottery booth. Miku likes the first prize, which is a Hawaii vacation, and she also likes the second prize, a TV. However, Tatsu is aiming for the third prize, a vacuum cleaner. With this day being the last day in his tenth try, Tatsu hopes he will get it this time. But after spinning, he gets the fifth prize, a cute stuffed toy that Miku loves. Although he loses to the lottery boss, he declares he has won because he was able to make his wife smile. As she hears those cheesy words, she punches him for making her feel shy on the street. Miku's parents suddenly announce that they will stop by the house to visit. The suddenness makes her a bit worried, but Tatsu assures her not to worry, as he will take care of everything. As soon as her parents arrive, he brings tea and cakes he has made himself to entertain them. His mother-in-law unexpectedly gets along well with him because of his housekeeping skills. She even asks him to teach her some cooking recipes. Tatsu's father-in-law is an introvert. Even though he really wants to participate in everyone's stories, he doesn't know how to start a conversation. After thinking for a while, he finally thinks of a topic to talk about. But Tatsu doesn't seem to understand what his father-in-law really means. In the end, he invites Tatsu to play catch ball with him because he is hoping that if he had a son, he would have played this game with him. They head to the park to play ball, with the father-in-law hoping to build his bond with Tatsu. Tatsu doesn't understand how to play catch ball. Instead of throwing the ball back, he runs to his father-in-law to return the ball like a dog would do with his master when told to fetch it. The father-in-law gives up, and when Tatsu asks, the father-in-law explains how catch is played. However, right at the first shot, he is thrown into the tree by the force of Tatsu's throw, leaving him impressed. Miku has just returned home from work to find Tatsu, sitting amidst a chaotic scene. She hears him claim that a stray bullet has come from behind, but it turns out that there isn't actually a bullet, it's a roach. Tatsu had grabbed an insect spray, but unfortunately, the can is empty. The roach is still alive and has taken to the air, flying around. Miku can't stand by idly, especially when the roach lands on her beloved police doll figurine. Tatsu attempts to swat the roach away, but it unexpectedly lands on his chest. Tatsu, displaying unwavering determination, asks Miku to do whatever it takes to eliminate the insect. She musters up the courage and grabs a newspaper, ready to strike the roach with all her might. She takes a great swing, but she completely misses the roach and hits Tatsu in the face instead. Despite that, Tatsu remains resolute. He decides to burn incense to repel the roach, as these insects are known to dislike the smell of aromatic oils. Christmas has come. Tatsu wears a Santa Claus apron to transform himself into the Santa Claus character in order to deliver gifts to the children's Christmas party on his street. When he arrives, the children don't believe he is Santa Claus, but he asks them to call him Immortal Klaus and asks if they've been good or naughty. In the end, instead of gifts, he presents them with amazing food which the children enjoy. Once it is late, he bids goodbye to the children and returns on his shopping bicycle. Tatsu decides to apply for a part-time job at a coffee shop. On his first day, the coffee shop receives two rather unusual customers, two gangsters, one older and one younger. The older gangster wants to impart some tough guy wisdom to his junior. However, when they see Tatsu serving water, both of them are taken aback by just how much he looks like a real gangster. Things get even more interesting when Tatsu prepares latte coffee for them, complete with adorable kitty art. Surprisingly, the younger gangster appreciates the cute touch, but his boss scolds him, insisting that he needs to maintain a tough image. When it comes to ordering food, the junior gangster asks for omelet rice, and Tatsu serves it with a unique twist. He writes gangster using sauce on the dish. Later, the boss had placed an order for a special strawberry dessert, revealing that he, too, has a fondness for cute and delightful treats. The boss eagerly raises his hand when the dessert is served, and they both thoroughly enjoy their meals, leaving the coffee shop satisfied and happy. Thanks to his part-time gig, Tatsu is able to earn enough money to buy gifts for his wife. Every time Miku comes home from work, she is extremely tired. Today, Tatsu makes a feast of energy-boosting foods to nourish his wife. After eating, he also prepares citric acid and lemon juice to make lemonade for her, as it relieves fatigue very well. He even helps his wife with a massage to make her as comfortable as possible. However, being taken care of too much makes her feel uncomfortable, although she is no longer stressed. 
she decides to throw everything out and take a shower, which is the most refreshing option. Meanwhile, Tatsu treats himself to the same massage and some lemonade. One time, when he goes to the supermarket, he meets Hibari Toriai, who is also from a rival gang. She recognizes the legendary immortal dragon from the past. But seeing the two famous figures from the gangster world now wearing aprons makes the encounter awkward. Since the Toriai's gang has disbanded, Hibari and some men from the clan decide to work in a supermarket to survive. But having lived as a wealthy person all her life, she rarely gets involved in simple matters of everyday life. This lack of experience leads her to struggle with the task of labeling and stacking the shelves. She is doing it wrong. Tatsu ends up rearranging the cans and correcting her mistake. During checkout, she accidentally charges Tatsu twice for an item. When he asks for a correction, her associates initially want to confront him, but she recognizes her error, apologizes, and promptly refunds the overcharged amount on his bill. Masa goes to Tatsu's house with the intention of planning a surprise birthday celebration for Tatsu. When the door opens, it is Miku who greets him and introduces herself. Masa explains his birthday plan for Tatsu, and Miku reveals that she had been planning the same thing before he arrived. They decide to join forces and prepare for Tatsu's birthday together. Miku begins by cutting the ingredients for the cake, but it seems like she wants to chop up the entire cutting board. For the cake, she pours so much flour that it spills over, and they even end up burning some of the food. In the end, their efforts result in chaos, and they give up on their preparation. Upon Tatsu's return, he is shocked to find the house in disarray. He starts doing everything himself, from cleaning to decorating and even making his own birthday cake. Tatsu tidies up and sings his own rendition of the happy birthday song, which has a somewhat dark undertone, as is his usual style. Miku and Masa then present their gifts to Tatsu. Miku gives him a necklace, and Masa gives him glasses. Tatsu tries on both accessories simultaneously, and they both agree that the accessories suit him perfectly. Tatsu's former boss pays him an unexpected visit. Since leaving the gang, Tatsu has not crossed paths with his former boss. The two of them settle down for a conversation after Tatsu meticulously removes some dog hair from his boss's clothes. During their chat, Tatsu surprises the boss by presenting a cute sweater for the boss's dog. The boss is delighted with how the outfit looks on his pet and can't resist taking a photo with his beloved dog. Just as the boss is about to discuss the reason for his visit, some neighbors come around. One of the ladies among the neighbors points out that the boss's dog appears to be underweight. Without hesitation, Tatsu springs into action and whips up a healthy meal for the dog right there on the spot. The dog eagerly devours the meal, much to everyone's satisfaction. In the end, the boss departs without delivering the message that a higher-up wants to recruit Tatsu back into the gang. Instead, after witnessing Tatsu's new life and contentment, he simply remarks that Tatsu is exactly where he is meant to be. One morning, while Tatsu is shopping, Miku rushes up to him in a state of panic, urgently pulling him away to come see something. He realizes she wants him to witness a live-action cosplay event of her favorite anime happening in the mall. The cosplayers are acting out a fighting scene. The MC announces that they need a child volunteer to join the heroes on stage to fight. In the end, they reward the child with a photo with the idols. Miku can't participate because she's an adult. However, knowing how much his wife desires this, Tatsu raises his hand, and to his surprise, he's chosen. The MC likely selects him due to his intimidating appearance. As Tatsu takes the stage, the audience anticipates how he will assist the heroes. However, instead of engaging in combat, he inquires about who initiated the fight and calmly speaks about how violence won't resolve any problems. To everyone's astonishment, he unveils a cloth on the stage with cups of tea neatly arranged then quickly prepares tea in the cups. Tatsu then invites both teams to sit down and enjoy a cup of tea together, aiming to foster reconciliation. Though his method is unconventional, it ultimately allows Miku to fulfill her dream of meeting her beloved anime idols. Masa has just received a microwave oven and decides to call Tatsu over to get some guidance on how to use it properly. Tatsu is genuinely amazed by the various functions of the new appliance. To test it out, he decides to make some bread using the microwave. With enthusiasm, Tatsu gathers all the necessary ingredients and begins preparing the dough. He needs it with all his might. When he asks Masa to fetch some plastic wrap to let the dough rest, Masa accidentally trips on a wire while searching for the wrap, causing the microwave oven to tumble to the ground. Sadly, the microwave is damaged in the fall. Despite this mishap, Masa promptly apologizes to Tatsu, who reassures him that it's alright. Tatsu pulls out a rice cooker, selects the necessary settings, and uses it to bake the bread. 
After an hour and a half, the bread, shaped like a bear's face, is a success. Tatsu decorates the bread and Masa, amazed by the bread, can't wait and attempts to take a bite. However, the bread is scorching hot, causing him to toss it directly onto Tatsu's face. While Tatsu is outside, drying some clothes, he suddenly notices smoke coming from his neighbor Bob's house. Worried that there might be a fire, Tatsu hurries over to investigate, only to discover that Bob is actually grilling meat on a barbecue indoors. Bob, extending a warm invitation, asks Tatsu to join him, and Tatsu eagerly accepts, ready to enjoy some delicious meat. However, as they attempt to take the first bite, the thick smoke filling the room makes it impossible to savor the meat. They have to open the door to let the smoke dissipate and then use water to extinguish the coals, clearing the air and damaging the meat. Tatsu inquires why Bob is grilling indoors, and Bob explains that he's feeling homesick and misses his dad's barbecue from their homeland, so he wanted to recreate the experience. Tatsu decides to take matters into his own hands and guides Bob outside to the yard to continue grilling meat. Together, they set up the barbecue, grill the meat to perfection, and allow it to rest. However, their barbecue adventure takes an unexpected turn when the police arrive and inform them that it's illegal to barbecue outdoors. In a selfless act to ensure Bob can enjoy the meat he's been craving, Tatsu blocks the policemen from disrupting the barbecue. But despite his efforts, when Bob finally prepares to eat the meat, he can't bring himself to do it because it's cooked on the rare side, resembling sushi rather than a traditional barbecue. Miku receives a ticket from a friend at work to attend a farm-themed park and invites Tatsu to join her. Initially, Tatsu is reluctant because he doesn't believe the park is suitable for their ages, but he eventually agrees to accompany her. They spend the day at the park, taking pictures, visiting animal petting zoos, and exploring the various fun attractions. As hunger strikes Miku, Tatsu mentions that the food at such places is usually expensive and reveals that he has packed lunch for both of them in advance. Miku playfully teases him, suggesting that he seems more interested in the park than she does. This leads to a light-hearted argument, but it doesn't take long for Tatsu to open up and admit the truth. Growing up in the underground, he has never experienced a place like this, and he is genuinely grateful to Miku for giving him this opportunity. Although the couple has planned more activities for the afternoon, the rain begins to fall, showing no signs of stopping. Disheartened, they return home in the rain, their spirits dampened. When they arrive home, still in a gloomy mood, they decide to retire for the night. A few days later, the couple is relaxing at the beach, with Tatsu trying his hand at the watermelon smashing game. After successfully smashing the watermelon and enjoying it, suddenly out of nowhere, a stray volleyball comes hurtling toward Tatsu and smacks him in the face. To his surprise, it turns out to be the bear team that he had played against alongside the housewives some days ago. The bear boss, recalling Tatsu's previous loss, offers Tatsu a rematch, offering to face off any day he chooses. When Miku gets wind of this, she doesn't hesitate to scold Tatsu, reminding him that he is a man and urging him to seek an immediate rematch. She enthusiastically drags him over to the bear team and announces their desire for a rematch. Both sides play with great enthusiasm, with Miku even shouting the names of serving techniques to motivate herself and encouraging Tatsu to do the same. As the game intensifies, a powerful shot from the bear boss is about to strike Miku. Tatsu knows that his wife won't be able to block the shot, so he rushes forward and uses his body to shield her from the incoming volleyball. The ball has not yet hit the ground, and Miku, determined to keep it in play, acts as a springboard for Tatsu to make the decisive shot. But before he can fall to the ground, his wife catches him in her arms. With the combined strength of husband and wife, they emerge victorious in the match, leaving the bear team stunned. Torajiro came to the realization that his crepe business wasn't doing well, so he decides to switch to making tapioca milk tea, following the trend since that's what people are buying. However, the only person in the area who knows the best way to make tapioca is Tatsu. Despite his initial reluctance, Torajiro has no choice but to muster the courage to seek Tatsu's help. Reluctantly, Tatsu agrees to assist Torajiro and takes him to meet a street vendor who can provide guidance on where to obtain the necessary ingredients for making tapioca. Torajiro's frustration grows when they end up at a basic baking store, and he grabs Tatsu by the shirt, thinking that Tatsu is playing a joke on him. Torajiro argues that tapioca should be like pearls, small and round. Tatsu aggressively explains that tapioca is made from a dough of flour, water, and sugar then shaped into small pearl-like spheres. With the combined efforts of these two former notorious gangsters turned chefs, they successfully create tapioca. 
They sample their creation and are amazed by how delicious it tastes. They go on to start their tapioca milk tea business, but a few potential customers are deterred by their intimidating appearances, causing them to walk away. Fortunately, a group of gangsters eventually stops by and purchases six cups of their tapioca milk tea. Tatsu decides to take Masa to a 100 yen store filled with countless useful household items. Initially, Masa seems uninterested in the store, but Tatsu promptly gives him a huge slap to emphasize the importance of these affordable tools and items. To test whether Masa has been keeping up with his housework or not, Tatsu starts quizzing him about various household items in the store. When Tatsu points to a lint filter for the washing machine, Masa confidently claims it's a convenient insect catching net. However, as Tatsu continues to ask about different items, such as an apple slicer, Masa's answers grow less accurate. He refers to the apple slicer as the handle of something and makes similar mistakes for other items. After this round of questioning, Masa has to admit that he hasn't been actively involved in housework lately. Tatsu, being understanding, assures Masa that it will take time to get used to it and then hands him a bunch of 100 yen items to take home, intending to make household chores easier and more manageable for him. One night, while Miku is sleeping, she hears the sound of chopping and slashing coming from their room. Curious, she gets out of bed and sees Tatsu working intensely on something. It turns out that Tatsu has been invited to a kindergarten as a substitute entertainer for the children. He has spent the entire night working on a homemade version of the story of Mama Taro, which he has written himself. Tatsu begins his storytelling. Once upon a time, there was a boss and a boss lady. As a married couple, they are quite poor, so the boss would often go to the mountains to cut firewood to make a living. One day, the boss lady brings back a huge peach, thinking it is food. But as soon as they open it, a baby emerges from inside. They accept the baby and name him Mama Taro, raising him as their own. As Tatsu continues, he explains how Mamatero grows rapidly into a young man. With demons causing trouble in the land, Mamatero decides to embark on a quest to defeat these malevolent beings. Along the way, he encounters a dog and another companion, forming a trio to confront the demon gang. They journey across the sea to confront the demons and, in the end, emerge victorious. The bandit leader surrenders and begs for his life. Before Tatsu can conclude the story by explaining that the evil master commits seppuku, the teachers at the kindergarten interrupt him. They opt for a more cheerful ending to the tale for the sake of the young audience. Tatsu finds himself sitting and chatting with a group of housewives at a cafe. He shares stories about his past and the numerous overwhelming tasks he had undertaken during his days as a gangster. However, as he recounts his tales of heavy work, the ladies at the table mistakenly believe he is referring to Miku ordering him around. They think she is a formidable and demanding wife. To make matters more confusing, when Miku calls and requests Yudon noodles for dinner, she gives Tatsu specific instructions on how she wants them prepared. Unfortunately, Tatsu doesn't put the phone on speaker. As he agrees to her instructions, he unconsciously uses phrases that a gangster might use when referring to ending someone. This leads the ladies to believe that this couple has sinister intentions to harm someone. Before leaving, the ladies still want to ask Tatsu what has transpired. But he continues to speak vaguely, explaining that Miku needs him to pound something and he has to handle it quickly. The concerned ladies reassure Tatsu that if he ever encounters difficulties, he should not hesitate to seek their help. Tatsu goes out to buy some discounted frozen meat when he unexpectedly encounters Gota from the Hikaro gang, someone he had previously victimized. He initially thinks that Gota might seek revenge. To his surprise, Gota pulls out a microphone and transforms into a professional rapper. He uses rap to share his story of misfortune after being wronged by Tatsu. Without hesitation, Tatsu willingly takes the mic and begins rapping, matching Gota's skills. However, Tatsu humorously raps about his housework, and they continue rapping for a while. A growing crowd has gathered to watch their impromptu rap battle. Things take an unexpected turn when Tatsu criticizes Gota's shirt for being ugly, which leaves Gota feeling downcast. Tatsu, realizing he has gone too far, shocks everyone by offering a sincere apology. He then suggests they start again, this time using meat as the theme of their rap. A nearby butcher, seeing the crowd, comes to investigate. Tatsu, in his rap about the butcher, crosses a line that leads to the butcher slapping him in protest. Gota, still feeling disheartened, can't find the words to continue and kneels down in defeat. Finally, the butcher picks up the mic and begins singing his own song about meat, bringing an unexpected end to their rap battle. Miku is about to embark on a business trip, and Tatsu begins asking her if she has packed everything she needs. Miku reassures him that she will be fine and reminds him to take it easy for the day. 
taking her advice to heart, Tatsu decides to give himself a break from his usual strict cleaning routine. Instead of washing the blanket as he does every day, he uses a scented spray to freshen it up. Rather than meticulously folding the clothes from the hanger, this time he doesn't fold the clothes before putting them in the closet. He opts for the simplicity of a cup of instant noodles for lunch instead of homemade food. While eating his noodles, Masa pays a visit. Upon learning that Tatsu is on a mini vacation from his household chores, Masa decides to show him what real relaxation means. He makes Tatsu join him in playing video games. Later, he even invites their neighbor, Bob, over to play a game of kick the can. However, Tatsu, not used to the unusual idleness, expresses his desire to go home and do some housework. But Masa insists he stay put and relax. Masa's own laziness gets the best of him, and he falls asleep almost instantly. Tatsu, on the other hand, can't simply sit still. His hardworking nature compels him to want to clean. Masa wakes up from his nap just in time to stop him. Masa promises not to allow Tatsu to work, scaring the hardworking house husband. The neighborhood Halloween costume contest is approaching, and Miku wants them to participate. When Tatsu hears that the second place prize is a year's worth of rice, he enthusiastically agrees to join. As they prepare for the contest, they realize that other gang members, including MS, Toriai and Torijiro, are also after the coveted prize of a year's supply of rice, while Miku has her eyes set on the hot spring trip for the first place winner. As the Halloween festival commences, the Toriai family kicks things off with an impressive speed calculation game with big sister Toriai's lightning-fast typing skills. However, her speed is so remarkable that it seems the tangerine season will end before she finishes. Next, Torajiro dresses as a victim of numerous stabbings, but his gruesome appearance leads to his quick removal from the stage. Masa arrives late, causing him to be skipped over, and they move on to the fourth contestant, the Tatsu couple dressed as pumpkins. They make pumpkin-shaped cookies on stage as their performance, even resorting to bribing the three judges with the cookies, but victory eludes them. Ultimately, the ninth contestant, a cute little girl dressed as a bat, takes home the prize, and none of the gang members wins the coveted second place prize. The Tatsu couple decides to enjoy a buffet meal, and Tatsu is determined to make the most of their money's worth. Tatsu carefully calculates how to satisfy his stomach without overeating. He strategizes on which dishes to start with to avoid getting too full too quickly. However, once he arrives at the buffet and sees the vast array of delicious dishes, he abandons his plants. He ends up piling their entire table with food, savoring each delectable item despite already feeling quite full. Tatsu's appetite seems insatiable, and he can't resist the temptation of dessert. Unexpectedly, while Tatsu is at the dessert station, he runs into Torajiro. The two men find themselves in a playful tussle over who will get a bite from the dessert plate. Unfortunately, the dessert-loving aunties at the buffet take everything and don't leave them a single piece to enjoy. As they walk back to their dining table, Miku reveals a plate of dessert that she had taken earlier, and invites Tatsu to share it with her, bringing tears of gratitude to his eyes. Miku's parents pay a visit, bringing along some groceries, and her father asks Tatsu if they can make a hot pot. Tatsu agrees, but as he's about to head into the kitchen to prepare it, his father-in-law insists that he should rest and volunteers to handle the cooking himself. However, it turns out that Tatsu's father-in-law is quite clumsy in the kitchen. In his attempt to process the ingredients, Tatsu's father-in-law ends up chopping vegetables along with the cutting board and creates quite a mess reminiscent of Miku's cooking style. His efforts to wash the vegetables only result in splashing water everywhere, making Tatsu increasingly concerned about the state of the kitchen. Tatsu tries to convince his father-in-law to let him take over, but to his surprise, Miku comes into the kitchen, rolls up her sleeves, and joins her father in cooking. This double trouble in the kitchen escalates the chaos. Both of them shape meat into large balls and even consider throwing them directly into the hot pot, much to Tatsu's dismay. He watches in horror but manages to intervene just in time to prevent it. Just when it seems like they're about to add even more unnecessary ingredients to the hot pot, Miku's mother rushes into the kitchen, coming to the rescue. Her intervention saves both the hot pot and the kitchen from further mishaps. Tatsu can't help but admire his mother-in-law, recognizing her as the epitome of a true housewife who knows how to handle a chaotic situation in the kitchen. One day, as Tatsu is on his way home from the market, he suddenly feels a wave of dizziness washing over him, realizing that he might be coming down with a fever. He quickly makes his way home and prepares a concoction of water, lemon, and honey to boost his immune system. 
in his mind. It feels like a battle against the random viruses invading his body, and he is determined to emerge victorious. To further aid his recovery, Tatsu also uses a humidifier and facial steamer. However, his attempts at self-treatment take an unexpected turn. He makes a cup of water mixed with cold medicine, hoping to alleviate his symptoms, and then goes to bed in an attempt to regain his strength. Unfortunately, instead of improving, his temperature spikes from 37 degrees to 39 degrees Celsius. He grows weaker and eventually faints on the floor. When he regains consciousness, he finds his wife applying a cold towel to his forehead. Tatsu tries to downplay his illness, but his wife firmly insists that he needs to rest. With her gentle but firm insistence, Tatsu has no choice but to lie still and allow himself to recuperate. In the meantime, Miku prepares a special vegetable and fruit syrup and forcefully pours it into Tatsu's mouth. Tatsu initially fears the concoction will be his demise, but to his surprise, the next morning, his illness has improved. However, he now has a minor stomachache. The new year has arrived, and there is an air of excitement all around. Despite his financial woes, Masa eagerly makes his way to Tatsu's house, hoping to secure some money for himself. Upon entering, he finds the couple engrossed in the traditional practice of calligraphy. Feeling the urge to drop a hint, Masa decides to write no money on his own piece of calligraphy. He has the clear intention of hinting at receiving some lucky money for the new year. However, Tatsu doesn't seem to pick up on the hint. Undeterred, Masa's stomach grumbles loudly, and he takes advantage of the opportunity to mention that he has no money and can't afford to buy food. In response, Tatsu decides to take him out to make machai cakes, which they later enjoy together. Afterward, the two of them have some fun playing badminton and attempting to fly a kite. Throughout their activities, Masa drops hints about his financial situation, but it seems that Tatsu either doesn't notice or doesn't respond. Eventually, Masa gives up on his subtle hints when Tatsu generously gives some lucky New Year money to Ryota. Masa, Tatsu, and Miku decide to go to a bar for a night of drinking. They begin by sampling some sweet rice wine. But they don't stop there. Instead, they continue to indulge in more drinks. As the night wears on, the effects of the alcohol become evident. Miku, who has been laughing uncontrollably since she started drinking, can't stop. Tatsu, on the other hand, has reached a state of inebriation where he's sleeping with his eyes open, still standing. Meanwhile, Torajiro, who happens to be at the same bar, starts crying over the slightest of things. Masa has to take charge of the situation. He manages their antics until each of them eventually passes out from exhaustion or, in some cases, from vomiting due to excessive drinking. The next morning, Tatsu and Miku are relieved after taking a comforting bowl of hangover soup to alleviate their discomfort from the previous night. Tatsu is participating in his cooking class when, to his surprise, there is another man named Hyerno who is in the class and also trying his best to make a chocolate cake. However, Hyerno's approach to baking is quite aggressive, and he is creating quite a mess. Tatsu isn't too fond of the situation but wants to offer his help. When Tatsu offers to assist Hyerno, he initially refuses. However, things take a turn for the worse when Hyerno's aggressive handling of the cake batter results in it being knocked over. Seeing the mess and sensing Hyerno's frustration, Tatsu decides to strike up a conversation. Tatsu asks Hyerno about his reason for wanting to bake, and Hyerno reveals that he wants to make a chocolate cake for someone special on this Valentine's Day. Tatsu, with his characteristic wisdom, explains that cooking with love from the heart is the secret to great cooking. He then decides to lend a hand to help Hyerno complete his cake while also finishing his own cake for Miku. It turns out that Hyerno has actually baked the cake for his boss, Kunami, and not for a beautiful girl. Despite Kunami not showing it openly, he is indeed pleased to receive the cake. Miku has a friend named Yuriko, who is a housewife but struggles with managing her expenses wisely. Miku recommends her husband, Tatsu, as someone who can help with financial matters, so Tatsu gets involved in assisting Yuriko with her financial situation. First, Tatsu asks Yuriko to assess her physical well-being because they will need to use their bodies to save money. Yuriko hesitates, fearing she might be dragged into something inappropriate. But it turns out that Tatsu simply wants her to use her bicycle to take advantage of cheaper deals at the supermarket. Next, Tatsu teaches Yuriko how to save water in her household, from washing dishes to flushing the toilet properly. He provides detailed instructions, leaving no aspect untouched. When it comes to cutting off, Yuriko misunderstands, thinking he wants to cut something off physically. But it's actually about reducing excess spending in both living expenses and fixed expenses. Tatsu goes through everything while reviewing her calendar. 
While examining their financial history, Yuriko notices that her husband has withdrawn a significant amount of money, and she is curious about how it has been used. When her husband returns, Yuriko immediately questions him about the money. Her husband explains that he has withdrawn it to buy a gift for their upcoming wedding anniversary. Yuriko is delighted with the bracelet he gives her, and the couple celebrates and talks about their special day. Miku and Tatsu leave to give them some privacy. Miku eagerly awaits the special DVD release of her favorite anime the following day. Due to her work commitments, she can't go to the store herself to recite the required sentence. She convinces Tatsu to go on her behalf and memorizes the lines meticulously. As he journeys to the store, Tatsu encounters several distractions, like an irresistible cabbage sale at a vegetable store. These interruptions make it challenging to remember the lines. Upon arriving at the store, Tatsu has forgotten the lines completely. However, he bravely attempts different lines, accidentally sounding like threats to the saleswoman. Fortunately, another customer arrives and recites the correct line, jogging Tatsu's memory. With the DVD secured, this customer mentions an opportunity to obtain a special card by reciting another line at a different toy store. Intrigued, Tatsu joins him in this quest. Regrettably, they arrive too late, and the special cards have sold out, leaving the other guy disappointed. Tatsu's friend is busy with work and asks Tatsu to help take care of his dog, Kotsu. Both Tatsu and Miku fall in love with the adorable dog. Tatsu takes Kotsu outside for a walk, but Kotsu suddenly refuses to move. Tatsu finds this so cute that he can't resist taking a few pictures of Kotsu and sending them to his boss. When Tatsu's boss sees the pictures, he is so charmed by Kotsu's cuteness that he wants to rush to Tatsu immediately. However, while Tatsu is on his walk with Kotsu, he encounters Kunami, who is also walking his own dog. The two men initially glare at each other with what seems like murderous intent, creating an intimidating aura. But it turns out that they both just have a strong desire to pet each other's dogs because both dogs are big and warm, making them irresistible. Kunami calls for his car, and with both of their dogs, Tatsu and Kotsu enter the car. Kunami mentions that he is taking the dogs to a very interesting place, which turns out to be a dog park. At the dog park, both dogs and their owners run around happily, enjoying the day together. The cafe owner seeks Tatsu's advice to revamp the cafe's menu and attract more customers. Tatsu promptly takes him to a nearby popular cafe for inspiration, where they sample various desserts and dishes aimed at appealing to women and children. Surprisingly, they both find the food delightful prompting them to temporarily steer clear of sweets. Upon their return, Tatsu prepares a special chicken sandwich for the owner to taste. With just one bite, the sandwich transports the owner back to his youth, evoking memories of his past relationship. However, a wasp interrupts the nostalgia by appearing in the memory. Tatsu swiftly offers him tea which burns the owner's mouth, triggering another memory of the owner getting burned by cigarette ash during a trip to India. The owner, tired and shaken, decides to retire for the night, thanking Tatsu for his efforts. Tatsu rewards himself with the sandwich. This triggers his own memories, including gunpowder smells, bullet holes, and a recollection of Miku finding him injured in an alley with a wasp on her shoulder. The presence of the wasp means there is a lingering bad aftertaste associated with the sandwich. Masa is having lunch with Tatsu when he suddenly feels a toothache. Tatsu suggests that he might have a cavity, but Masa quickly makes up a story about fighting with 50 thugs the day before, which Tatsu doesn't believe for a second. After lunch, Tatsu warns Masa that ignoring a toothache could lead to the cavity getting worse. Masa tries to play it off as nothing serious and admits that he usually brushes his teeth once a day. Tatsu, however, stresses the importance of brushing thoroughly three times a day after meals to maintain good oral hygiene. He explains that neglecting dental care could result in losing teeth and gums, possibly requiring dentures for the rest of his life. Masa finally admits to having a toothache but confesses that he is terrified of going to the dentist due to a traumatic childhood experience. He recalls how his mother had promised to take him to buy snacks but instead took him straight to the dentist. The shock from that event had haunted him, and he still can't face going to the dentist. Despite Masa's reluctance, Tatsu doesn't take no for an answer. He gives Masa a beating and then drags him to the dentist, where Masa's dental issues are finally addressed. Ironically, Tatsu himself might also be developing a toothache. One night, Tatsu and Miku decide to watch a horror movie together. While Miku keeps getting scared, Tatsu acts all calm as if the movie isn't affecting him. However, once they go to bed, Tatsu can't shake off the images from the horror movie which keep replaying in his mind, and he can't sleep. 
he has a nagging feeling that someone is watching him, which makes it even more difficult to fall asleep. To distract himself, Tatsu tries to play a mental numbers game, counting imaginary gangsters standing around him. However, his vivid imagination leads to the imaginary gangsters getting into a fight. He attempts to listen to sleep sounds, but his mind keeps drifting back to thoughts of gangsters. Desperate to get some sleep, Tatsu gets up and makes himself a glass of warm milk, a common remedy to induce sleep. However, it doesn't seem to help much. He also ends up making a meal with ingredients known for their sleep-inducing properties, but it's too late to eat such a substantial dinner. Finally, Tatsu goes back to bed, hoping to fall asleep. Just as he's about to drift off, a loud noise startles him. It turns out the noise comes from their cat, who is using the litter box. Tatsu is assigned the task of collecting residential group membership dues by the leader of the residential group. To help him with this mission, he enlists Moss's assistance. However, due to Tatsu's intimidating appearance and aura, when they go door to door to collect the dues, the residents are terrified, thinking that they are being targeted by the mafia. With this initial fear, all the residents don't dare say no to paying the dues, thus they collect it all. But Masa can't help but feel that this job is entirely unsuitable for someone with Tatsu's intimidating demeanor. The last house they have to visit is a tall building that appears quite affluent. Masa warns Tatsu not to enter the building, as it looks like a dangerous place. When they enter the gang boss's office, he initially seems ready to attack Tatsu for his unexpected presence. However, upon hearing that the dues Tatsu is collecting are used to benefit the neighborhood, the boss decides to comply and pays the dues, avoiding any confrontation. Miku has bought a mountain of bread with the hope of collecting winning tickets to get plates with the faces of her favorite idol. However, this massive amount of bread poses a storage challenge as there is no space to store it. Despite Tatsu's concerns about the surplus bread, Miku is determined to eat her way through it to get the winning ticket. Her initial enthusiasm leads her to start eating the bread, but she quickly realizes that the task is more challenging than she had anticipated. Even with Tatsu and Masa offering their assistance, they all struggle to consume such a large quantity of bread. Their stomachs easily become full, and they can't eat any more. In an attempt to make the task more manageable, Tatsu decides to get creative by preparing the bread with other foods like fruits and cheese to make it easier to enjoy. However, despite their best efforts, they have only made a small dent in the mountain of bread, and eventually, they have to give up on the endeavor. The Toriai gang boss, who has a strong passion for cute cats, decides to disguise herself using just a pair of sunglasses and visit a cat cafe to play with the felines. She hopes that when she arrives, no one will recognize her. However, she encounters Tatsu, who is working part-time at the cafe. Despite the unexpected meeting, the boss can't contain her excitement and starts playing with the adorable cats. She becomes completely enamored with the cute felines, and her affection for them is evident. She even kisses one of the cats, which Tatsu tries to discourage. As she continues to interact with the cats, she notices that one cat is sitting alone on a shelf. Tatsu explains that it's a stray cat that doesn't readily approach people. However, it has a strong affinity for a natural green foxtail grass. Undeterred, the boss rents the foxtail grass leaves to play with the cat. Over time, she develops a special connection with this particular cat, feeling that it resembles her late husband in some way. She ultimately decides to take the cat home with her, despite Tatsu's attempts to explain that the cat belongs to the cafe. When a storm disrupts Tatsu and his wife's picnic plans, Tatsu's frustration gets the better of him. He decides to confront the storm head-on, expressing his defiance at the audacity of the weather for ruining their day. They fortify their house to protect themselves from the strong winds and rain. However, Tatsu soon realizes that human strength is no match for the power of the storm. He is hit by a tile, resulting in a bleeding head injury. Panicked, Miku quickly pulls him inside the house to tend to his wounds. Meanwhile, Masa seemingly ventures out to buy croquettes in the midst of the strong winds. He calls Tatsu to let him know that he has bought some for him as well. However, the wind is so fierce that it blows the phone out of Masa's hands, causing the call to disconnect. Tatsu becomes concerned about Masa's safety and rushes outside to check on him. Fortunately, Masa is unharmed, and Tatsu spots him approaching with the croquettes in hand. Unfortunately, due to the strong winds, the croquettes fly right into a gangster's face. To prevent a potential altercation, Tatsu swiftly prepares a delicious sandwich and stuffs it into Masa's mouth, which the gangster happily enjoys. This helps defuse any tension and keeps the situation peaceful. Tatsu, Miku, and Masa embark on a camping trip in the woods. Tatsu, with his determined and aggressive approach, expertly sets up the tent and chops wood for a campfire. 
He seems to be on a mission to make everything perfect for their camping experience. Miku and Masa decide to go fishing. Luckily, they manage to catch some fish for their dinner. Their plan is to prepare grilled fish along with vegetables and fruits to accompany rice for their meal. However, a mishap occurs when the clumsy Masa accidentally kicks the pot of rice on the ground. Tatsu, determined to salvage their dinner, instructs Masa to approach other campers and ask if they have spare rice. Masa ends up encountering Torajiro, who is also camping nearby, and requests some rice from him. To repay Torajiro for the rice, Tatsu offers him a pack of marshmallows as compensation. Torajiro decides to get creative and makes a delicious grilled sandwich filled with marshmallows and bananas, which turns out to be a hit with Masa and Miku. Tatsu, not one to be outdone, showcases his cooking skills by incorporating all the ingredients they have on hand to create a hot pot. However, the unseasoned grilled fish in the food ends up spoiling the overall meal. Later, the neighborhood chair lady talks to Tatsu during lunch and explains that she is a member of a powerful women's association in the neighborhood known as the Eight Dragons. This association specializes in organizing private events and neighborhood activities. They are looking to expand their membership and want to invite men to join and contribute to the group. After assessing the candidates, they believe that Tatsu, the house husband, is the most suitable candidate for the position. Tatsu is taken to the association's council meeting room, where he meets the eight ladies, each responsible for a specific duty within the group. The association's president decides to test Tatsu's suitability by asking him to quickly prepare a pot of tea for everyone to enjoy. Tatsu immediately brews the tea pours it into cups, and serves the ladies. Although he lacks some refinement and elegance, the tea is deemed satisfactory. However, one of the dragons, the lady in charge of flower arranging, is not convinced of Tatsu's suitability, and disapproves of his joining the association. She believes he lacks the required elegance for the group. In a bid to prove his sincerity and secure his spot in the association, Tatsu kneels down before them and expresses his strong desire to be a part of the group. Touched by his sincerity and determination, the flower arranging lady agrees to give Tatsu a chance. She sets the condition that he attends her flower arranging class three days a week. Tatsu accepts the terms without hesitation and diligently starts learning the art of flower arranging. After some time of immersing himself in the world of flowers, Tatsu feels confident in his abilities. He decides to take the test again to demonstrate his refinement and elegance. This time, he elegantly serves the ladies of the association, showcasing the skills he has learned through his dedication to flower arranging. Recognizing his growth, the association finally allows Tatsu to join their ranks. Tatsu is watching Miku's favorite anime, Polycure with her when she confides in him about her friend's child who is also a fan of the show but can't enjoy it due to illness. Miku wants to find a way to cheer up the young girl and enlists Tatsu's help. To brighten the girl's day, Tatsu dresses up as a villain from the anime, a role he easily pulls off thanks to his imposing appearance. However, when the young girl sees him in his villainous attire, she bursts into tears, clearly frightened. Thinking quickly, Tatsu decides to change tactics. He makes a cute fruit plate from the fruits he has brought and gives her mother a cushion to make her more comfortable. To add a touch of cheer to the room, he arranges some flowers neatly. As part of their plan to make the young girl happy, Miku pretends to be the hero Polycure, while Tatsu plays the role of the villain. They stage a realistic fight in the room, encouraging the girl to cheer them on and support the hero. However, the performance, although well-intentioned, ends up causing disruption and distress. The nurse in charge has to intervene and ask them to leave the hospital to try to force happiness upon the girl and disturb the peace of the hospital. One fine day, Tatsu's father-in-law decides to take him to a haiku club for some bonding time. At the club, his father-in-law volunteers to be the first to read his poem, and it's well received by the club members. Intrigued by the atmosphere, Tatsu decides to give it a try and comes up with a few verses on the spot. However, his poems turn out to be quite violent and far from the contemplative nature of traditional haiku. The group then moves to explore different locations, including a bridge and a romantic bamboo forest where Tatsu continues to recite his unusual and out-of-place poems. His father-in-law has to intervene to stop him. During their exploration, they stumble upon the bear's team who are also reciting Hakus. Surprisingly, the bear boss challenges Tatsu's group to a haiku duel. Instead of allowing Tatsu to handle it, his father-in-law steps in for their team. 
the haiku duel begins, and both sides start reciting poems inspired by their surroundings, including dragonflies and a couple in love. Tatsu and the bear's men cheer enthusiastically for their respective sides, even though the poems don't make much sense. In the end, both sides deliver an impressive poem when a cat is the theme of the poem. One day, after finishing ironing some clothes, Tatsu suddenly feels intense pain in his back, as if it's split in half. He finds it difficult to even walk and lies face down on the floor in agony. When Miku sees him in this state, she suggests that he might have thrown his back out. However, Tatsu, with his dramatic flair, insists that he has been assassinated by a sniper. Despite the pain, Tatsu stubbornly tries to pretend that he's fine and continues with his household chores. However, the pain is so severe that he can't even walk properly, let alone cook. Concerned for his well-being, Miku offers to take over the cooking duties. In the end, Tatsu decides to order food delivery to avoid the risk of Miku destroying the kitchen. However, he eventually realizes that the pain in his back is too much to bear, so Miku helps him seek medical help, which reminds him of the first day he met Miku. His doctor prescribes relief patches to alleviate his pain. Tatsu warns Miku about the rumors of a pervert stalking the streets at night, so she asks him to teach her some self-defense techniques to stay safe, and Tatsu agrees. One night, as Miku hurries back home from work, she suddenly feels like someone is following her. Fearing the worst, she turns around and swiftly punches the person who has been following her. She then grabs their hair and delivers a strong blow to their abdomen. To her shock, the person she has attacked is actually Masa, who has been trying to talk to her because he has seen her on the street. Miku doesn't initially believe that it's Masa, arguing that the real Masa's face doesn't look swollen, and continues beating the poor guy. Lately, Torajiro's crepe truck has been struggling to make sales, and the reason is the presence of a donut truck parked right beside his. What surprises Torajiro even more is that the owner of the donut truck turns out to be his younger sister, Koharu. Toharu has a vendetta against Torajiro because he has run away from home to work as a Yakuza. In retaliation, she decides to start selling donuts to compete with his crepe business. Koharu has even franchised with a big company, which allows her to serve her customers quickly and efficiently. Torajiro is disheartened by the competition and feels defeated. However, Tatsu happens to pass by and offers some encouraging words to Torajiro, urging him to stay strong. Tatsu decides to buy one of Koharu's donuts to see what all the fuss is about, but he finds it to be quite bland and unimpressive. Koharu disagrees with his assessment, but Tatsu is determined to prove his point. Using Torajiro's crepe truck, Tatsu makes a fresh donut from scratch. Koharu initially criticizes the plain appearance of Tatsu's donut, but when she tastes it, she is overwhelmed with delight. Tatsu explains that what makes his donut better is the love and care he puts into making it, which is lacking in her mass-produced donuts. Realizing the truth in Tatsu's words, Koharu apologizes to Torajiro, admitting that she started her own business because she wanted her brother to acknowledge her. On a cold day with freshly fallen snow covering the neighborhood, Miku is overjoyed by the sight of the snow. However, Tatsu has a different concern. He worries that the few drops of snow and dew on the glass window could lead to mold, so he promptly uses a dew wiper to clear them away. As Miku leaves for work, Tatsu heads out for some grocery shopping. While walking down the snowy street, he happens to encounter Kunami's group. They are engaged in the challenging task of shoveling snow. When Kunami notices Tatsu observing them, he approaches him but unfortunately slips and falls on the slippery ground. Tatsu, always prepared, has an item that can improve shoe grip in icy conditions, and he offers it to Kunami. This thoughtful gesture helps Kunami regain his footing. Tatsu also notices the group's efforts to clear the snow and offers them additional equipment to make their work easier and more efficient. With the newfound equipment, Kunami's group can clear the snow more quickly, and Tatsu leaves them to continue their work. Tatsu, Miku, and Masa have just finished making popcorn for their movie day at home. Excitement fills the air as they prepare to settle down for a film, but they quickly realize they have different ideas about what to watch. Miku is eager to indulge in her favorite anime series. Tatsu, on the other hand, prefers a slice of life series titled It's Tough Being a Guy. Meanwhile, Masa has his own unique taste, being a fan of movies that combine Yakuza themes with monstrous creatures. After an hour of back and forth discussion, they finally reach a compromise and settle on watching The Lion Queen. However, their challenges are far from over when Tatsu insists on watching the subtitled version while Miku insists on the dubbed version. This disagreement leads to another round of arguments, 
prolonging movie day even further. Miku finds herself in a bit of a predicament when a colleague asks her to take care of her hamster. Their home has a gangster and a troublesome cat, making it an unsuitable environment for the small pet. Tatsu decides to find a temporary caretaker for it. His first option is to ask Masa to look after the hamster. Masa has a soft spot for the little creature, but he is struggling financially and can't afford to buy food for himself, let alone a pet. Tatsu then takes the hamster to his boss, hoping that he might agree to care for it. However, his boss has a dog that needs to approve of any new additions to the household. Unfortunately, the hamster bites the dog's nose, causing quite a fright. As a result, the boss decides not to keep the hamster, as he doesn't want any harm to come to his beloved dog. With limited options left, Tatsu finds himself on the side of the road, unsure of where to take the hamster next. Two policemen passing by notice his peculiar behavior and stop to inquire about what he's doing. Tatsu, determined to protect the cute little animal, refuses to hand it over, fearing it might be taken away. However, the policemen grow suspicious, thinking Tatsu might be hiding something illegal. They insist on seeing what he's holding, and Tatsu reluctantly reveals the hamster. To their surprise, they find the hamster incredibly adorable, and Tatsu explains the situation. Feeling sympathy, the policemen agree to take in the tiny creature temporarily. Tatsu has an unexpected encounter with Torajiro, who eagerly shares that he has found a unique product. Torajiro invites Tatsu to a meeting place over the weekend to try out this intriguing item. The product turns out to be a tent designed as a sauna. Torajiro, always wanting to go big, pours scented water onto the hot stones inside the sauna, creating a steamy and incredibly hot environment. Tatsu and Torajiro decide to see who can sweat the most, and they enthusiastically fan the sauna to intensify the heat. They overdo it, and the sauna becomes unbearably hot. Both Tatsu and Torajiro end up delirious from the extreme heat. In response, Miku slaps Tatsu to bring him to his senses, while Koharu does the same to Torajiro. Afterward, they are both thrown into the river to cool down. Miku has an upcoming golf game with some clients at work, but she has no experience playing golf. Fortunately, Tatsu, with his knowledge from his Yakuza days, offers to teach her how to play. The following day, out on a golf field, Tatsu begins by instructing Miku on various golfing positions. He demonstrates how to hit the ball, and while doing so, he consistently hits sample balls, sending them a little farther each time. Tatsu then reveals a secret to Miku. When hitting the ball, never hit it farther than the boss but avoid making it too obvious. Miku follows his guidance and practices hitting the ball. Tatsu also emphasizes the importance of complimenting the boss's shots by enthusiastically shouting, Nice shot. They continue practicing, with Miku making progress but still missing some shots. However, their practice session is abruptly cut short when a crow swoops in and steals their golf ball. Katsu, Masa, and some of their boss's men venture into the forest to pick bamboo shoots. Masa, lacking knowledge about bamboo shoots, attempts to harvest a large one. However, Tatsu swiftly intervenes, informing him that the taller bamboo shoots are bitter, and that they should look for shorter ones, which are better for eating. The group begins digging for bamboo shoots, but their efforts are interrupted when a troop of monkeys arrives and begins stealing the harvest. Masa, not one to back down, threatens the monkeys. However, despite their efforts, the monkeys make off with most of the bamboo shoots. In the end, the group is left with only a tiny piece of bamboo shoot to bring back, far from the quantity their boss had requested. To salvage the situation, Tatsu takes the single bamboo shoot they have and cooks it into several dishes for their boss. Fortunately, the boss enjoys the dish. Tatsu and his companions decide to dine at Mr. Chen's restaurant, which features a special menu item, spicy Sichuan hot pot. The restaurant has a challenge that if customers can finish the entire meal within 30 minutes, it will be free of charge. They are eager to enjoy the meal and win the free food reward. However, as soon as they take the first bite, the extreme spiciness of the dish hits them hard. Despite the intense heat, they can't resist the delicious flavors. Tatsu notices Masa reaching for water and warns him not to drink it, explaining that water will only spread the spiciness further instead of relieving it. Unfortunately, Miku can't bear the heat and drinks water, disqualifying herself from the challenge. Masa, too, is unable to continue. Tatsu is determined to push through and asks Mr. Chen for a large bowl of rice to mix with the hot pot, hoping it will help balance the spiciness. However, he ends up getting knocked out as well, unable to finish the challenge due to being too full. Tatsu pays an unexpected visit to Masa's house for a quick housekeeping check. However, upon entering the house, he is immediately hit by a strong musty smell that seems to emanate from the shoes and clothes drying inside. 
Fortunately, Tatsu has come prepared with some herbs to combat bad odors. Together, they hang the herb wreath they made in an effort to freshen up the air. However, their attempt to rid the house of unpleasant smells takes an unexpected turn when they spot a cockroach. Masa, trying to deal with the insect, picks it up with his hands. In a swift reaction, Tatsu smacks Masa hard, sending him flying out of the door. One night, the group gathers to share horror stories. Miku starts by recounting a scary situation in her office, which Masa dismisses as not truly frightening. He then shares a tale from his hometown about a group of youths who ventured into an abandoned building only to be pursued by a tall female ghost that crawled on all fours. The story has an incomplete ending, leaving it somewhat confusing. It is then Tatsu's turn to tell a tale, and he begins recounting the curse that has befallen him recently. With a somber expression, he explains that a few days ago, he saw a TV advertisement for fresh snow crab on sale. Eager to enjoy this delicacy, he promptly ordered a brand new box, which was delivered to his home the next day. However, when he opened his freezer, he was shocked to find similar crabs that he had purchased a year ago still stored there. Tatsu can't help but wonder if he has fallen victim to the curse of the crabs he hasn't cooked. Miku and Masa, unimpressed, agree that this isn't a scary story at all but rather an example of Tatsu's forgetfulness. In the end, Tatsu cooks the crabs for them to enjoy that night. Tatsu's attempt to get Suzu, Miku's friend's picky eater daughter, to eat vegetables takes a rather unconventional turn. When Tatsu arrives at their house, he realizes that Suzu has a strong aversion to vegetables. He decides to prepare dishes that hide minced vegetables to sneak them into her diet. However, Suzu's sensitivity to vegetables surprises Tatsu. She can detect the presence of vegetables just by smelling the food. Faced with this challenge, Tatsu resorts to storytelling. He takes out a carrot and spins a tragic tale about a carrot that was rejected and shunned by children. The carrot then pleads that they allow him to be mixed into curry since children love curry, and this way, they might end up liking the poor carrot. It seems like the story is working, and Suzu is starting to show interest. But Tatsu decides to add some gory details to the carrot's fate in the curry, ultimately ruining his own attempt to get Suzu to eat vegetables. Tatsu decides to help the landlord by weeding the lawn and enlists Masa's assistance in the process. Masa ends up with bruised hands from the aggressive grass while attempting to pull the weeds. To improve their efficiency and protect Masa's hands, Tatsu provides him with specialized gloves. With the right tools in hand, they manage to do a much better job. Tatsu goes a step further by creating a homemade weed killer using vinegar and detergent to attack the weeds at the root. His method resembles a gunfight, where he sprays the weed killer like a cowboy. In the end, their hard work is rewarded when the landlord comes to offer them refreshments as a token of appreciation for their efforts. Tatsu encounters Ryota and another boy having a heated argument about whether rhinoceros beetles or stag beetles are stronger. Tatsu joins the conversation, siding with the rhinoceros beetle as the stronger insect. However, Torajiro suddenly appears and argues in favor of stag beetles being the strongest. Rather than resolving the dispute, Torajiro's intervention turns the discussion into a fierce battle between the two hoodlums, who set a date for their respective beetles to have a physical fight to determine the superior insect. When the day of the beetle fight arrives, the two beetles engage in combat, but the outcome remains inconclusive as both beetles end up flying away. Tatsu notices that the small shops in his neighborhood are struggling due to the competition from the nearby shopping malls. In an effort to help these vendors, he came up with the idea of opening a street vending stall. His stall features knives, and Tatsu immediately demonstrates how sharp they are to attract customers. Surprisingly, people are drawn to the knives and start gathering around the stall. Additionally, he also assists a clothes vendor in selling anime merchandise. Despite initially haggling for a better price, a young customer eventually purchases the merchandise, making it a win-win situation for both parties. Watch this next video. See you on the next one.